Welcome, this is Cheryl from Nawadi's Art, and today we're going to look at my process for creating a 1 6 scale mask for the warrior goddess sculpture out of epoxy sculpt. I did not record myself making the little wire armature that holds the 3D printed sockets, but it's just a loop of wire and a little bit of super glue and epoxy sculpt to hold on the sockets. The magnets I will be using when the final sculpture is done. These are 4mm by 1mm neodymium magnets. They are not expensive, a hundred of them cost me about $5 online. If there is interest, I can make the STL files for these available. Right now, I am sketching out the forms for the armature. Once I have this raven skull shape sketched out, I will be cutting it from wire mesh to make the armature. I'm using some photos of raven skulls I have up on my computer monitor, as well as this raven skull pendant that my brother gave me for Christmas a few years ago. Adding a little bit of extra room for folding it around. This will be my template for cutting it out of the wire mesh. Now I just have a folded piece of scrap paper that I'll be transferring this onto in order to make the template that I can actually trace onto the wire mesh. making sure it fits properly onto the wire, and it does. So now just with a Sharpie tracing it onto the wire mesh. And then cutting it out again. These are not good scissors. Do not use nice scissors on wire mesh at all. You will destroy your scissors. But these are some really cheap old scissors that I have, and I don't care. Next step is just to bend and twist this wire mesh, folding over the seam of the beak and just making it so it can fit onto the wire form. And of course also fit onto the face, trim it down a little bit because it was a little too large. This is just a lot of trial and error, figuring out what it should be, then tracing out the lie holes so I can cut those out. I did not cut these out at the beginning because I knew I might need to resize things and trim it down. Using a little bit of wire here to reinforce the seam along the beak. Something like this where it needs to be fitted to a sculpture. It's a lot of trial and error, just make sure it fits. Now the sculpture is very unfinished, but the head size and general shape is where I want to be. I decided I want a little reinforcement on the beak, so I cut another small piece of wire mesh and just wiring it on. The wire mesh is great. It is fantastic for wings, for thin pieces like this mask, even for clothing, anything where you need to sculpt a thin layer and you need reinforcement. a little bit of super glue to just reinforce everything for this armature. Now I'll be using epoxy sculpt to cover the armature with. This is a two-part sculpting putty. You really should be wearing gloves when handling this. It is a safety issue. 
However, I don't. I have decided that the risks are worth it to have the increased finger sensitivity to sculpt. If you're worried about it all, please wear nitrile gloves. Epoxy sculpt is mildly toxic and you can develop a skin sensitivity when working with it with bare hands. If you do work with it with bare hands like I do, make sure you thoroughly wash your hands, especially before you eat anything. This is just going to be a thin layer over the armature to give the initial structure. Now, epoxy sculpt can be worked with wooden or metal tools. I prefer metal tools. They are easier to clean off. And you can smooth it out just with a little bit of water. If you missed my earlier video on planning this sculpture, you should go watch that video. It goes into the whole concept of this warrior goddess, how I came up with the idea, and how I'm going to be doing this mask that is held on with magnets and can be removed to reveal her face. There are several warrior goddesses from Northern Europe in particular that are associated with ravens, particularly the Valkyrie in Norse mythology and the Morrigan in Celtic. So that is why I went with a raven motif for this mask. So really, I just wanted an excuse to do a mask removable with magnets. I just thought that was a great idea and I wanted to play with it. Now we're just finishing up this first layer and with any project like this where things need to fit together it is important to constantly be checking it to make sure it still fits. Once I'm happy with this initial layer, I'm going to let it sit for about three hours to firm up. Epoxy Sculpt takes 24 hours to cure completely, but you really only need three or four hours before you can start adding another layer. Now that it's been a few hours, we are filling in some spots, particularly on the inside of the beak and on the back. Making sure that around the sockets is completely locked in because we do not want those pulling out. And we also want them fairly flush with the back of the mask instead of sticking out. And a little bit of super glue because that socket was coming a little bit loose. Now some more filling in. And as always with epoxy sculpt, especially in these early stages, lots and lots of smoothing with water. problems after the first layer is I noticed that the back of the mask was a little too short so I needed to add a small strip of epoxy sculpt just to that back edge of the mask to extend it just the littlest bit.
And of course, keep fitting it and testing it against the sculpture to make sure it fits properly. Now I'm refining some of the shape of the beak. In the initial layer, it wasn't quite sharp enough or pointy enough. So this is just adding a little bit more, refining the shape. And this is a lot of what working with Poxy Sculpt is. It's create a layer, wait for it to firm up, and then work on another layer. So right now it is, again, just working on this beak, adding a few little details, filling out around the eye sockets. Here I'm adding these little bony protrusions that are right at the, I want to say the bridge of the nose, but it's actually sort of the bridge of the beak it is where the beak meets the rest of the skull. Now I'm filling in the top shape of the skull, getting a little flatter, a little bit more bird-like to match the reference photos. Once I finished this layer, it was very late at night, so I needed to go to bed. That is why there is now a 12 hour gap between this layer and the next. Next up is the detail layer. Right now I am sketching in the final shape of the eyes and also the little nasal cavities. By sketching it in like this, it gives me some guides for where I want to put the epoxy sculpt. Now we're adding in first the nasal sockets using a combination of my metal scribing tool and a couple little embossing tools. And again, lots and lots of smoothing. As you can see, I have a paper towel there for blotting up water after I've done the smoothing. This just keeps it a little less messy. I'm a big fan of these tools. These are some silicone tip tools from Amazon that have an embossing stylus on the bottom in various sizes. defining out the ridge around the eye socket and again some more smoothing with this detail layer it's really important to make sure that both sides are as close to symmetrical as possible because this is a bone mask, it doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical, but you want to make sure that you don't have any glaring asymmetries that are very noticeable. You want subtle variation, not uh, unbalance.
Now adding some small bone protrusions at the corners of the mask. This is to help sell that this is an organic thing. You don't want that entire sweep from the back of the beak to the back of the mask to be completely smooth. Now we're doing the second side and again, lots of checking of symmetry to make sure that this is all even. Adding some more texturing and defining those bone... Adding a little bit more texture and defining that bony area between the beak and the rest of the skull. Some more smoothing because there is so much of this in, in this sculpture. It's just so much smoothing, smoothing all the time. Again, checking fit, checking balance. I realized that the top of the mask still wasn't quite the right shape, so went in, added a little bit more to the top. This needs to look slightly squared off. And also this helps blend the top into the eye ridges just a little bit more. Also filling out what is, I guess, also filling out sort of the cheek area, for lack of a better term. adding just the smallest amount of epoxy sculpt to the inside of the eye sockets. They are not quite even and also just are a little too large around the eyes of the figure. However, I wanted these nice big deep eye sockets, but I needed it to not be these huge gaps around her face. So you sort of have this... So you have... The, so you have the whole eye socket and then you have an inset area that helps it fit around her eyes a little bit better. Now adding detail to the tip of the beak, this is the raised area that on the little pendant model is black. 
It's raised and it is the part where the bone of the skull meets the keratin of the beak. This is also where I can define the point at the tip of the beak. At this point, the actual sculpting of the mask is nearly complete. I'm just adding the last final details. And once this is finished, I need to let this set for a full 24 hours before I can come back and do the sanding and carving. Now that it's been a full 24 hours, the epoxy sculpt has completely cured and we can move on to the sanding. Now, first off, I'm going in with a needle file and just refining the inside corners of the nasal sockets and also the ridge of the beak. I also will go in and refine around the eye socket as well. Take a flatter file and define the ridge of the beak, getting it nice and sharp. This is something that's very hard to do in the epoxy sculpt. When it's soft, it wants to be softer and rounder. So the best way to get a nice sharp edge is to get as close as you can when the epoxy sculpt is soft and then wait for it to cure and then sand and file it to the proper sharpness. The actual sanding I am doing with various grits of wet dry sandpaper. I have, I have 250, 500, and 1000 grit sandpaper here. This is wet sanding, probably because I found wet sanding gives a better finish, but it also produces much less dust. Again, talking about earlier, epoxy sculpt is slightly toxic, and even if it wasn't, it is never good to breathe in any sort of dust. So wet sanding keeps the dust to a minimum. If you are dry sanding, you should absolutely use a mask. When I get to the carving aspect of this, I do have a mask on the entire time. Now you can see the pattern that I'll be carving onto the mask. I have it nice and blown up both for my own reference and so that you can see what the design is. I didn't record myself creating this design. It honestly took hours and a lot of Googling to look at Viking and Celtic knotwork designs. There are very similar motifs in both cultures. A lot of cultural exchange between sort of the Ireland area and Scandinavia, Viking raiding and all of that. The actual drawing took quite a while to do, so I did not record myself doing it. You did not see hours of me creating a design, not liking it, going back and creating a new one. I printed out both a full size and then scaled it to the right size to trace onto the mask. And to trace it, all I did was rub a bunch of pencil on the back of the printout and then traced over it with a pencil to transfer the design. After I got the pencil, I went in with a Sharpie to both darken the lines so they're easy to see 
and also so that they do not smudge while I am doing the carving. Now we're onto the carving. I am using a Dremel tool to do this. Specifically, I'm using a Dremel Flex Chef, which is attached to my regular Dremel tool. It allows me to have much finer control because it's much smaller. And the bit I'm using on it is a diamond tipped carving tool. I actually used two during this, um, mostly this one, which is just about the right width for all of the lines that I'm trying to do. My process is trace over the lines with the diamond bit, usually several passes, clean it up with the toothbrush, go in with the file, clean up some more, rinse and repeat, um, usually three or four passes for each. As you can see, this is a slow and painstaking process. Moving my camera in here closer so you can see a little better. What you can't see here is me taking frequent breaks. The Dremel vibration is really hard on the hands and wrists, so take breaks, don't overdo it. Also, sometimes I had to go in with a toothpick and clean out inside the grooves because the dust loves to stick down in there. And as I said earlier, I am wearing a mask while doing this. Don't take chances with your lungs. I am willing to risk, you know, potentially having a skin reaction. I do not want to ruin my lungs. So anything like this, always wear a mask, always wear eye protection. I am also wearing safety goggles. Just any time at all you're using a Dremel tool, no matter what you're doing, you really should wear safety goggles. There's always a chance of the tool breaking and it could fly off and hit you in the eye and that is not a good time for anyone. You're supposed to be making art and having fun and not taking trips to the emergency room. Now that the knotwork is finished, I have swapped out the bit for a smaller one, and this will be doing these tiny ridges along the beak and along the edge of the entire mask. The entire concept here is to make it look like carved bone. Originally the concept was going to be more of a tooled leather mask, but I decided bone was, well, just more fun, because it's a little bit creepier and I love creepy. This is also a warrior goddess, so something a little bit more grim and a little bit more evocative of death. The leather mask certainly would have been evocative of death, but bone just takes it to that extra level. enjoyed this video and seeing my process of creating this mask. I've been wanting to do more of an in-depth following my process, which I'm going to do for this warrior goddess sculpture. I did a live stream of some of the blocking in, the planning video, and now this, and I plan to keep going along and giving you progress as this sculpture evolves. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!